critters to colossal creatures, all animals are trying to escape from a wall of fire moving in their direction. The temperature is rising, and everything around starts catching fire. Soon, lots of animals and plants on Earth will cease to exist. This is the aftermath of a giant asteroid crashing into our planet. But what if dinosaurs had had critical thinking skills? They could have guessed what was going to happen, because this asteroid was visible a year before the impact. One year before the impact. With no city lights, all bright spots in the sky are stars. Some of them are planets reflecting the light coming from the sun, like Mars. But one of these dots is the asteroid. Later, it's going to be known as Chicxulub Impactor. It got this name because of the region of modern-day Mexico where it fell. Anyway, at this point, the asteroid looks like a star. It has the same brightness as Neptune. You could even have photographed it with a high-quality camera. If only dinosaurs had thumbs. The impactor is now passing through Jupiter's orbit. From this distance, Earth looks like a pale blue dot. One month before impact. The asteroid has become much brighter. It's now the most brilliant spot in the night sky after the moon. The asteroid crosses the orbit of Mars. Its tail, consisting of dust and gas, is getting longer and longer. It's now as long as two times the distance from Earth to the moon. One week before the impact. The intruder's tail is now five times the distance from the Earth to the moon. But the dinosaurs can not appreciate its beauty. To them, it's just another bright dot in the night sky. If this asteroid were flying toward Earth right now, scientists could pinpoint the exact location of its impact within a mile. Then we would evacuate people from the impact area and avoid a major catastrophe. One day before the impact. The Chicxulub impactor now holds first place among the brightest objects in the sky. The light surrounding it, called the halo, seems even bigger than the moon itself. The asteroid is now passing through the moon's orbit. It looks like a bright spot that leaves an ashy trail behind it. One hour before the impact. The light from the Chicxulub impactor is brighter than the full moon, and its movement can be seen with the unaided eye. Nights on Earth aren't dark anymore. Only now, dinosaurs begin to feel anxious. All animals on Earth start to seek shelter. Ten minutes before the impact. The asteroid is now passing through Earth's orbit. Thousands of small fragments from its tail begin to fall on the planet. It looks like a meteor shower. So far, these fragments are too small. They all burn up in the atmosphere before reaching the surface of the planet. The asteroid is approaching South America. If someone was looking at it from Europe, it looked like a sunset. The bright dot of the Chicxulub impactor is falling behind the horizon. Two minutes before the impact. Dinosaurs can now easily see the asteroid shape. If they knew how to do it, they could even estimate its size. It's a bit more than 6 miles across, which means it's almost the size of Manhattan Island. And the giant's weight is 15 plus 15 zeros pounds. It's flying toward the Yucatan Peninsula at a mind-boggling 7.5 miles per second. At that speed, you could get from New York to Los Angeles in around 10 minutes, but you'd kind of burn up on the way. 10 seconds before the impact. The Chicxulub impactor is now approaching the ground. A few more feet and BAM! The night sky suddenly turns white. The flash is so bright that the sun is invisible at this point. The asteroid's entry causes a powerful blast that can be heard on the other side of the world. The huge asteroid begins to burn because of friction with the air. It heats up and splits into many pieces. These pieces shower on Earth. After a few seconds, the largest part of the meteorite hits the ground. Its mass and speed provide the Chicxulub impactor with an enormous amount of energy. In the next moment, a super-powerful explosion shakes the ground. The blast wave from the meteorite begins to spread out from the impact site. It rips out huge chunks of soil and trees and then pushes them to the ground like dominoes. The temperature of the blast wave is so high that everything around the impact site catches fire. The energy released during the collision also penetrates deep into the planet. This causes the strongest earthquakes in our planet's history. They, in turn, generate tsunami waves as high as the Empire State Building. Five minutes after the impact, the meteorite leaves behind a huge crater. It's as wide as Lake Huron and deep enough to fit inside two and a half Mount Everests. Dinosaurs are running around in panic. They try to evacuate toward North America, but most of them don't make it through unfamiliar swampy territories. Another danger is the ongoing meteor shower. Hundreds of tons of ash and debris rise into the air. 
heated up by high temperatures, they fall to Earth in the form of liquid lava. Ash and smoke fill the atmosphere and block the sun's rays. Earth plunges into darkness. For several more weeks, our planet will be totally dark. Acid rains will fall on its surface nonstop. There was a lot of sulfur in underground deposits on the Yucatan Peninsula. The energy of the explosion evaporated all this sulfur. Now it's cooling in the air, gathering in clouds, and dripping to the ground. Most animals survived the impact, but the mass extinction continues for many more months. The collision has plunged Earth into darkness, and this has wiped out most of the plants that fed on sunlight. The plant-eating dinosaurs have lost their main food source and begin to disappear. But plant-eating dinosaurs are the main diet of meat-eaters. And now, dinosaurs like T-Rex have nothing to eat. Soon, they go extinct too. In other words, it wasn't a meteorite that wiped out dinosaurs, but hunger and climate change. Meteorites of this size fall once every 100 million years. It means that such an event might happen again. Will humans manage to survive this disaster? These days, we can look out far into space. And the appearance of an asteroid the size of the Chicxulub impactor won't be a surprise to astronomers. In general, asteroids that are more than 460 feet across are considered potentially dangerous. Anyway, if we know about the approaching space body, we'll be able to build shelters filled with food and water supplies. Once the asteroid is close enough, we can wait for the impact and its consequences inside. But when people come back to the surface, they'll see cities and towns torn down. Our planet will look like a lifeless desert. That's why we need another alternative, which is to prevent the impact. Here, we have many options, depending on the size and material of the asteroid. According to NASA, the most effective way is a kinetic ram. We'll need to send a fairly large and heavy object, such as a spaceship, into space. When it approaches the asteroid, scientists will choose the perfect trajectory, and the ship will crash into the space body. A powerful collision will change the asteroid's course, making it fly past Earth. The further the space body is from our planet, the easier it'll be to send it away. Another option is a controlled explosion on the surface of the asteroid. Newton's first law of motion will help us here. It says if a body is moving at a constant speed in a straight line, it will keep moving that way unless it is acted upon by a force. So if we make a big enough explosion or force, the asteroid will shift its trajectory. How much it moves depends on the amount of force applied to it. We can also blast the asteroid right from inside. In this case, there will be no need to change its trajectory. Instead, we'll try to turn one huge hunk of rock into a bunch of smaller fragments. They will burn up in the atmosphere and do no harm to our planet. Another way is a gravity tug. Every heavy object has its own gravitational force and gravitational field. Our goal will be to send a spacecraft to the asteroid and make it fly close to the intruder. The asteroid will attract the spaceship, but its engines will resist. As a result, the ship will slowly but surely pull the asteroid toward itself. This method will take much longer, but gradually, the trajectory of the asteroid will change and it won't crash into Earth. Hopefully. We can also use solar power. We can build a spaceship with a system of giant magnifying lenses. Then we'll send that station closer to the sun. When we spot an asteroid, we'll point the lens in its direction and focus the beam on the space body. The heat from the sun will cause the asteroid's material to evaporate. Eventually, this will make the intruder change its trajectory.